I like to see the people very enthusiastic like that. I greet you all with the peace of the Lord. I invite you to stand in reverence to the Word of God. And let's open our Bibles in the book of Hebrew, Hebrews. Chapter 11, verse 7. Book of Hebrews, chapter 11, uh, chapter 9, verse 7. 11, 7. Amen. Let's read together. Let's read together. Whoever doesn't have the Bible, it will be projected. Let's read together. By faith, Noah being warned of God of things not seen yet, moved with fear, prepared an ark to saving of his house, by the which he condemned the world and became her of the righteousness which is by faith. Amen? The church may be seated. Brethren, we are joyfully, as for June uh, is the month that, by the revelation from the Lord, we always have as a target of our prayers our family and family members. We have this experience to have the privilege in the month of June to focus, focus our prayers, our s surrendering to the Lord through fastings and early dawn prayers during the day, by noon. It's a moment that we can seek the Lord in favor of the ones that is part of our family members. This is being a victory, a joy. Because if you we are if you we if we are here tonight, if you belong to this church, if you have your assurance of salvation is because one day someone prayed for you. You enter here, you are in the Lord because some, someone made a prayer and God heard and brought you here. So you can be part of, not only of the church as an institution, but to be part of this spiritual family. And the project of God, it's always upon, uh, above or uh, about the family. Since the beginning, God has plans for the family in the marriage and the children the union between husband and wife and God always answers and r respond to the prayers of his servants and we as a church since the beginning we face battles it's a millennial battle. Why? Same, same way that God wants to bless our families. What is the, the counter intention of the enemy of our souls? Is to destroy the families. So we are in this constant battle, this constant struggle since the beginning of all times. When God has made Adam and Eve, He gave to them the right to be taking care of the garden 
Aviv. The plants, the animals. And God told them, you can eat from any and everything. But there's one tree that I don't want you to take. The tree, its name is the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. That was the, the first Bible, the first verse. God spoke to them and explained that to them. But the serpent approached and told them, no. Well, well, let me, let's see if the children can, can answer that. What else? So what did the serpent say to them? No, you don't need to listen to God. You can eat. Go ahead. No problem. So that's what, this is what the serpent told to Eve. You're not going to die. Uh, the only thing that's going to happen, you're going to get knowledge like he has as God. So this battle reached our, our current days because the same way that God speaks to man kind and promises the enemy of our souls is trying to remove from the mind and the heart of the man whatever is true whatever is life in reality death came to the world because of the disobedience if, one, if any day, if you lost a family member, I have lost my parents. I know what that is, how that hurts. Some cousins, uncles. But the, the fault is not from God. Man was not created originally to die. He was made to live eternally in God's presence, in fellowship with Him. God will never make Adam and Eve and their children. They will not, not let you get married and to build a family, to lose the family members. That was not the first intention of God. But the disobedience cause all that and put man away from God's presence and the fact that they know the voice of God, the advice from God and to give more attention to the voice of the evil made them to be removed from the even Eden paradise the garden so uh, the first concern from God is to keep man with him. There's nothing worse for a mother tha than when the, the, the son or the daughter is out of the house and is getting late and they don't know if they will arrive alive. So the, the, the greatest concern of the parents is to see them growing so when they reach the teenagers 14 15 they start to grow some wings and they try to show that they are independent they know everything they don't need anything they don't need to obey they go to the college in the same way that is a blessing for us but God only knows the concern of the parents when their kids go to college because you don't know what is being shared there what they are listening that child that you brought to be presented to the Lord when he was a baby the one that you prayed for so long for the health to bless and then the moment arrived that there is this uncertainty 
this fear uh, is my my children are my children listening to the voice of the Lord are they putting in practice what we thought and what the church has given or maybe they are listening to other voices the voice of the serpent saying ah that is too much it's not like that you are youth don't read the Bible every day don't need to go to church you don't need to sing songs to the Lord you have your whole life in front of you later on you come back you reconcile with God when you grow up enjoy your life there's so many things so much things that you can experience good stuff so is that what our kids are listening is those are those voices stronger and more powerful than the voice of God in their hearts and minds in the gospel of Luke the Bible says that the second come of Jesus will be like the days of Noah Jesus mentioned the days of Noah because in the days of Noah he lived moments very similar to the moments that we are living if you read the whole st history the whole story about Noah if you remove his name and if you le read the, the, the story of Noah without mentioning his name you might think that this is from our days our quotidian why because the, what happened in the moments of Noah the all the evil is the same the world lost more than ever all the value all the commitments with love with family with the human being with everything and anything that's why Jesus compared in the days of Noah Matthew 24 starting on 36 about the time and, and day as was in the days of Noah it will be in the days of the second come of the Son of Man because as in the days of the the flood they drink they eat they get married they give themselves in marriage until the day that Noah entered the ark and they didn't notice until they see the rain and everything was killed we live in moments like that very similar moments lived by the Noah and his family but by faith Bible says that Noah give her to the voice of God by faith Noah also heard from the Lord Noah you go and build an ark and God gave all the instructions detailed instructions how the ark will be built three stories one door only one little window on upper upper window God gave to him all the instructions all the dimensions all the instructions the project the blueprint and do you know how long that took for Noah to build this ark who can answer that a hundred years imagine how many times Noah heard criticism no are you crazy what is this man what are you doing where are you going with that but by faith the voice that Noah heard because of the experience that he has there was no with a no man but with God that voice prevailed during 100 years imagine 100 years when Noah heard the first instruction and he decided I'm gonna talk to my wife to my children from now on I'll dedicate on this project and nothing else back then there was no Home Depot 
So you have to go to the forest, to the wild wilderness and choose the right tree, put it down. All the logistics to bring, I don't know how they do it, to the area where he lived. Cut all the wood, all the, the sheets, all the plywoods, all the plies of the wood. Imagine him and his family involved in that, stopping for lunch. And then she brings that nice and smelly, uh, good smell food, good flavor. Uh, in the afternoon, a little break for coffee. So there, there was for a hundred years. It was not a week. It was not a moment of pandemic. Fifteen months, no. 100 years. No one involved in that project obeying the Lord. You don't do this out of blue. Nobody does that out of nowhere. It needs to do by faith. It needs to be done by faith. So by faith, divinely advised of things that he never saw, he feared. Because the faith generates fear, respect, wisdom. And for the salvation of his family, imagine what a blessing. He didn't do that for himself only. He did because God promised him, I will save you and your family. Because the things are very difficult around. The corruption, all the evil, the sin... the drunkenness, people were getting married today, tomorrow, if the wife woke up with the, the other side of the bed, they fight and they separate it. That's what, that, how was it? Like in our days. So if, if the man says something that the, the wife didn't like, she will expel him from house. Very similar to the days that we are living. Jesus never used the name of Abraham. Jesus chose the days of Noah. The second come of the Son of Man will be like the days of Noah. And in our days, we are experiencing that. The mankind lost the notion of the values and this is the greatest concern but the same way that the Lord saw that Noah obeyed him during 2,000 years until after Jesus born like about 2,000 years we Understand that the faithful church also awaits for the fulfillment of the prophecy. So for about two years we've been waiting. As Noah waited for a hundred years. So without getting tired. God didn't tell him how long. Just told him, go build the ark. Start building the ark. Uh, he had no idea when the rain would start and he built so when he finished he entered the ark with the family and the Bible says that God closed the ark from outside it was not Noah that closed the door and then the rain came and the death came with the rain the judgment of God approached they couldn't see anything outside the only way that they had was to look to look up because they didn't have like windows sideways and they did not have access to try to open the door they were like kept safely God provided a way that the door can be closed from outside so it was a complete protection they lost the access and the contact from the exterior world. Imagine what they're going to see if they could see, if they could look. 
the bodies of float, floating, dead bodies floating, because this is what the Bible says that happened. The flood came upon the earth, the vegetation, the animals, and the, the whole humanity back then. The only family that was kept alive was Noah and the family members. In any moment, Noah forgot the word of God. N Noah never questioned or his family put in question what God was about to do. Interesting that Noah has this enthusiasm and he prepared the ark for the salvation of his family. That's why if you want your, f your family to be saved, if you have intention to see your children growing and getting married and form another family, you know what you have to do, right? You have to build an ark, otherwise you're not going to see that. The worst thing is for a father to bury his son. He was in a place that he shouldn't be, in the wrong time, in the, with the wrong people. So the world is offering all the feasts, the parties, and all the pleasures of this world. The serpent is there inviting, talking, convincing them, trying to convince them not to listen to God's voice, but to listen to the voice of this world. But we'll say again, if you wanted to have your family safe and sound against the things of this world, the most important thing, we know that for this world, one day we'll die. There's no way to change that nature. But the interesting thing is, for eternal life, you need to build an ark. You need to enter in this ark. You need to be in the ark with the door closed. And the only thing that you have to... The only position you, you can look is looking up. Because the window was put in, in the upper side of the ark. So the only way for us to survive in these worlds handling all the combats of this world, all the diseases, the plagues, is to be inside the ark. Do you want this? Is this what you want or you want to give up on everything that God has spoken to you one day? Do you want to give up of the, the things that the Lord has done and promise that you will do when you came to the gospel the moment that you accepted Jesus as your Savior do you want to give here to to the offers of the world? No. Nobody wants that. That's why the invitation from the Lord tonight is build an ark and do this way and for the praise and for the honor of the name of God do you know where this ark is? It's here. We are here. We are inside the ark. The ark is the work of the Holy Spirit. It's not the, ch the Maranatha Church. It's not the Assembly of God or Baptist, but it's, the, it's a project that goes beyond the institutions. And we are inserted in this project called Work of the Holy Spirit. And this Holy Spirit is working in our hearts, making that within this protection, we can fulfill God's project for our lives. Away from the world, separated from the world. We know what's around. We know what, what is in the world. And you know what is awaiting for you uh, far from God, away from God. And, and this is not what we desire. We desire to be with the Lord. We need to be with Him. And that's why we need to seek the Lord, asking for more faith. Because it's by faith 
that we will be putting our lives before Him and you're going to be an example so your family can follow you. God will change your heart. God will transform you, your mind. You will operate. You're going to be a new creature. And then you're going to start to obey only the Holy Spirit. And this will make that the rest of your family will follow the same direction. They also will do the maintenance of the ark, go to the wilderness and dedicate all the activities involved. They, were gonna, they, wanna be, they, they will desire to be part of this project. So the only and the best resource is this. There's no other exit. There's no other option. There's no other way to make man reach God unless it's from through Jesus. This is the message that we all know. It's very simple, but may God talk to your heart tonight through this word so you can cancel the voice of the serpent and listen to the voice of God. Value the voice of the Holy Spirit because that is the voice of truth. That is the voice that will make you to reach eternity. Amen. May the Lord bless us. Blessed be the name of the Lord. 
Bread and the, the door still opened. The salvation for man is still available, but it can close anytime. Do not miss this opportunity. As I mentioned, this month we will be praying for the family and sometimes who knows, you might have someone and you might be questioning, I don't need that, it's not time. We need to to listen to the voice of the Lord and to insist and to persevere in prayer because as through prayer we're going to move God's heart. Amen? The door of the ark, which is Jesus, is still open. It will be, will be closed by God because He is the one that will give order to His Son. Son, it's time. Go rescue the church. And at this moment, when this happened, then the door will be closed. And nobody could open later on from within, from inside. After the door was closed, it was sealed. And the moment we, that we are living is a moment of prayer, a moment to seek the Lord for the ones that are inside the ark so the Lord can preserve, so the Lord can cancel the voice of the serpent inside their minds and hearts, and even more for the ones that didn't enter the ark yet. So let's be faithful to the Lord with fear. Let's be, keep building the, building the ark until the, the, the day that we're going to departure. The maintenance of the ark is constantly, something constant. Amen. Tonight we have a spiritual gift about a man that you probably are trusting things of this world. The Lord showed there is a man that is still uh, being supported by the things of this world. Leave these things. Give up on those things. Surrender your life. Stop the questionings. God knows your questions. But the Lord is saying to you, believe, because it's by faith. That's the only way that you can reach salvation. It's by faith that you're going to open your heart and you're going to let God control your life and guide you through eternity. Let's pray. Let's pray for the... Uh, let's have one word of glorification. It's inaudible. Help us, O oh Lord, when we pray for the ones that is not under the wings of salvation yet. Use us with wisdom, with your Holy Spirit, so we can preach, so we can spread the gospel, and we can see salvation among our family members. We trust you, O oh God, and we know that there is the perfect time, which is yours. Help us to keep giving good testimony. Sustain us in the name of Jesus. Amen. Receive, O oh Lord, our adoration. And keep talking to our hearts. And that your voice can be heard and obeyed. Give us boldness, authority to rebuke the voice of the serpent. Do not let us be confused. Do not let us look back. Do not let us give up of this project, this marvelous project that you have put in our hands. Help us to work with a commitment, looking up only 
to you, O oh Lord. Bless us tonight. Give us a, a victory during this week in the name of Jesus. And in your name we may we say that the grace, wonderful grace of our Savior and Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, our eternal Father, sweet and tender consolation of the Holy Spirit can be poured out upon all of us now and forevermore. Amen. The church may be seated. Let's start our assistant, assistance through Zoom with the workers that are participating through Zoom and presently we're going to be praying for the ones that are here tonight. And we say to you all, peace of the Lord Jesus.